I'ma crush it. Salutations, I'm Anthony Walker, defender of gamers and your host of Unsung Pittsburgh's nonprofit news magazine show. We enjoyed having Jenry and his mom join us last episode. We hoped you enjoyed hearing how one boy's idea has blossomed into helping kids and their families fight cancer. Unsung asks, what's your idea and where will it lead you? Tell us on Twitter with hashtag UnsungPGH. This episode of Unsung is dedicated to domestic violence awareness. Our very own Christopher Whitlatch went to Greensburg to strap on a pair of high heels and walk a mile in her shoes with the Blackburn Center. And we share a PSA from the Women's Center and Shelter as well. But first, as always, let's take a look at the latest news from our area nonprofits. Lynn Zelovansky, the director of Carnegie Museum of Art, announced the launch of the Hillman Photography Initiative, which aims to be a living laboratory for exploring the rapidly changing field of photography and its impact on the world. According to Zelovansky, the initiative positions the museum to be a leader in a subject area with broad appeal and profound relevance to contemporary society. We are deeply grateful for the William T. Hillman's Foundation's support and partnership in this effort. Martin McGuinn, chairman of the Carnegie Museum of Arts Board, added, The initiative's focus on art and technological innovation makes it a great fit not only for the Carnegie Museums, but for the entire region. We expect it to become a national model. You can track the progress at initiative.cmoa.org. Carnegie Library of Pittsburgh's customers will now have greater access to programs, computers, materials, and facilities. Beginning the week of April 14th, most Pittsburgh Library locations will have expanded hours, opening more evenings, and for the first time in more than a decade, CLP Downtown and Business will be open on Saturdays for customer usage. In total, library customers will gain an additional 79 hours per week. The additional evening and weekend hours enable the library to increase access to services, programs, and materials for students and adults. This is just one of the ways the library will address community needs in 2013. The library plans to expand access to technology, provide additional early learning outreach programs, and services to preschools and daycares, and work toward long-term financial sustainability. To celebrate the new hours, City Libraries will host special evening and weekend programming ranging from wellness programs, genealogy workshops, movie marathons, and open houses. For program details and to locate hours of operations for all Carnegie Library of Pittsburgh locations, please visit carnegielibrary.org. And now, let's send it out to Christopher in Greensburg. Hey Anthony, Christopher Whitlatch here at the Walk a Mile in Her Shoes. And what I won't do for a, a, for Unsung and for a nonprofit, I've got high heels on and I'm out covering this story with Melissa Carey. Melissa, who have we talked to today? Uh, we have the Seton Hill lacrosse team, Seton Hill football team. We have a, a junior high from Latrobe. Uh, that came up with the idea because a boy went around and did presentations in his class and brought the kids that wanted to come with him out here. Um, we have family members, we have friends, we have people from the community and they all seem to just love what they're doing here. As you can see, it's a huge community effort that's come out here to Lynchfield and Greensburg, put on by the Blackburn Center. And why we're all here is to bring awareness to domestic violence in the community. So let's get their stories. Blackburn Center has been providing services in Westmoreland County since 1976. So we've been doing it for more than 36 years because our mission is two part. First part of our mission is we want to help people who've been victimized, and that's really important, and that's a core thing that we do, and have been known to do for a long time very well. But the other part of our mission is to stop the violence from happening, and and that's a kind of a more challenging part of the mission in the sense that it's just kind of hard for us to get our heads around sometimes of what that would actually look like. What's it going to take to stop this kind of violence from happening? But we know we need to go deeper. We need to go broader, which is one of the reasons we're doing this kind of an event now. Walk a mile in your shoes is an opportunity for us to really go into the community and say. Why does this happen? And what do we all need to be committing to and doing so that at some point in our future we'll stop happening? So we put guys in high heels. As a, it's a symbolic gesture for them to say, we're making an effort to understand what a woman experiences in her life. 
Now, so the heels are a symbolic gesture to say, it's hard to walk in heels. It's an, a, kind of the idea is to say, and so we're trying to understand what a woman experiences every day in life when she has to be on guard at all times. Uh, and that's a, that's a difference for women compared to men. We have to worry about if we're walking on an elevator with somebody that we don't know, if we're walking to our car in a parking lot. The guys who come, we're expecting maybe 100 to 120 who will be actually in heels. And they're gonna, and they're gonna do what? And they're gonna walk around a track for a mile where we have the uh, abbreviated mile. I always felt that, you know, everybody deserves to be safe particularly in your home. You always think of your home as being a safe place and there's so many people that suffer and, and don't have that. And the second thing is that I, I was really cranky that 97% of the time my gender, the male gender, was the uh, perpetrators in domestic and sexual violence. And I felt that, you know, I was not one of these types of people and, and for, the majority of men are not. And so it's important that men stand with women uh, and, and work together to get rid of both domestic and sexual violence. Um, the men's pledge is um, it's 10 things that men can do to end gender violence against women. Um, and it's pretty much everything from agreeing to not be violent with a partner, and if you are, that you'd seek some help, to um, avoiding sexist media and trying to fight sexism within the media. And really, we're just asking that men come out, sign the pledge. Um, there are things that everyone should be doing every single day. Well, we're here with the lacrosse community, with the rest of the Seton Hill community. We're having trying to support a great event that's going on out here. We're walking a mile in her shoes. There's a lot of us with the red Converse shoes here, you can see. Uh, we're going to signify the, all the stress and the duration that these women have gone through. We're out here to raise attention about domestic violence and rape and we just want to be heard so more people can know about this situation. My son came home with a flyer and all he could say was, can I go, can I go, can I go? It is such a good cause. And I was very pleased to find out that the school was doing this, that they were talking about it, because we do have to raise awareness so that we do become our sister's keeper. So this is our third year. First year we had 300 people, last year we had a little bit more than 400, this year we're looking at 700. So we know that it's really growing. We've heard from a lot of people that this is such a meaningful way for them to be involved in the mission, which is what we're looking for. We're always looking for ways for the community to be able to make that um, contribution with us in raising their voice and being a part of that solution to speak out about the root cause. I um, just want to support the cause and help out women who have been through it and help prevent women from going through it later in their lives. Um, I've, I had an aunt that went through it and it really messed her up and uh, I would never want to see that happen to anybody else. It's different. Uh, my feet are already hurting so this mile is going to be kind of tough but uh, we're out here just supporting the cause for women abuse and uh, you know people need to be aware because it's out there. So It's important too that when uh, that men understand that uh, when people are in a situation like that it's important to believe a woman who's been violated and to help them seek out help at places like the Blackburn Center either by calling the 800 number or by uh, getting in touch with the Blackburn Center and, and utilizing a lot of the services that are offered. Um, we've seen in some parts of our services, absolutely, we've seen a steady increase. Um, and in the request for things like education, we've certainly seen an increase in that. Um, so it, um, it it depends on the kind of service we're providing. It kind of ebbs and flows, but definitely there's more of a need. Um, and unfortunately, there's less funding. So we're having to get more creative about, yeah, really significantly less funding. So we're having to get more creative about how we provide service so that we don't cut back on the things that people really need us to be providing. For people who want to get involved in the work that Blackburn Center does, they can go to our website to get information about the things that are available for them to help with. So that's blackburncenter.org. It ranges from people wanting to commit to volunteering, which is kind of a big time commitment, but so important and so necessary, to acting on committees that we have, serving on committees, to collecting things that we need to keep our shelter running and we need to be providing to women who've been in uh, situations where they could really use some follow-up help. Um, there's a range of things that are available through the website that can get people connected in different ways. And our hotline is available 24-7. Um, the local number in Greensburg is 724-836-1122. We also have a toll-free hotline, which is 888-832-2272. So that would be a way to get directly in touch with us, and um, we can talk to them about the things that we can provide, and other ways to do safety planning and things that they can be accessed. Thanks, Christopher. A reminder that we can all take an active role in domestic violence awareness. This is from the Women's Center and Shelter.
This poem is for the woman I love. I knew not what love was till you awoke within my heart. We are now together forever, never shall we part. I will track where you are, I'll decide whom you see. Remember, sweetheart, you belong only to me. So do what I say and don't do anything dumb, or I may have to hit you until you are numb. If you tell another soul, well, that will just make me mad. Because I tolerate you, and for that, you should be glad. There's one more feeling I must express to you, honey. Don't ever, ever let me catch you touching my money. Some relationships are not as they appear. That's because domestic abuse is often hidden. Join the Women's Center and Shelter in the effort to end abuse early on. Help yourself, help a friend, or help the cause. Visit the Women's Center and Shelter at wcscanhelp.org. The Toonzeum is working with August Wilson Center and Bricolage to bring you the first annual Comic Arts Festival on May 26, 2013 from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. There will be over 50 cartoonists signing autographs, doing live sketches, and hosting panel discussions. Artists include Kathy Guys White from the comic series Kathy, Lynn Johnston from For Better or Worse, and Patrick McDonald from Mutz, and many, many more. For more information, go to pghcomicartsfest.com. The Silk Screen Festival announced the Asian American Film Festival will take place at the Regent Square Theater, Melwood Screening Room, and the Carnegie Museum of Natural History's Earth Theater from May 10th to May 19th. A full schedule is available at silkscreenfestival.org. And last but not least, River Quest told Unsung to save the date for Saturday, July 13th, its first annual Celebration of Excellence in Science Education at the Fox Chapel Yacht Club. The event includes family-friendly food and activities. For more details, visit riverquest.org slash riverfest. You might have recognized story tags and Twitter handles after our stories. We here at Unsung invite you to continue the conversation by tagging the nonprofit or using the story tag on Twitter. You can also get in touch with us on Twitter at PGH on video or hashtag UnsungPGH. As always, thanks for watching Unsung. Be sure to share it with your friends. You can check out our previous episodes and our Unsung Uncut series on PittsburghOnVideo.org. And hey, once again, we're on iTunes. The video version has been there for a while, but if you're on the go, you can now get the audio. Got a nonprofit you think is cool? Let us know why, and you might just find yourself right here on Unsung. You can email Christopher at whitlatchc at pghfdn.org. As always, I've been your host, Anthony Walker, reminding you to keep it awesome, Pittsburgh. We'll see you next time. So I said I'ma crush it Call me the golden boy cause it shine whenever I touch it Don't rush it, the flow comes naturally Actually, the whole hood after me 